This is a, a recorded uh, candidate interview. Uh, this is for the new uh, House District 52 for the Virginia General Assembly. And, uh, you know, Mr. Wendell Walker, who is an incumbent right now, um, is the current, uh, you know, is our candidate that we're interviewing today. And, uh, you know, welcome. Uh, we also have Kenny Craig uh, and Penny. Uh, if you can just introduce yourself and your role uh, that you have at Liberty University. Absolutely. My name is Kenny Craig and uh, I'm, I work for Liberty University. I'm the director of government and community relations here. So thanks for being with us, Delegate Walker. Yep. Thank you. All right. And again, I'm Barry Butler, director of government relations for the Lynchburg Regional Business Alliance. And uh, and so uh, we're doing all these uh, interviews via Zoom uh, this, you know, this year. Uh, we have three state Senate districts that touch on the uh, Lynchburg region. And we also have five, uh, four uh, house districts that touch on the Lynchburg region. And the thing about uh, this, the 52nd is that it encompasses all of uh, the city of Lynchburg and a small part of northern Campbell County. Uh, so, and again, uh, welcome, uh, Delegate. And uh, just to kick this off, the, uh, the first couple of questions, um, and you did get the questions that we sent out to every candidate. They're all the same. Uh, did you get those, uh, in fact? Yes. Okay. All right. So first question, tell us a little bit about yourself, professional experience, and the connection to uh, the district that you're running in. Okay. So I've been here in uh, Lynchburg since 1975, came here to go to uh, Liberty University, uh, which at that time uh, had not broken ground on the current campus that we are enjoying. And so that's where my life began here in the city of Lynchburg, and I've been here ever since been involved and engaged in the community in a lot of different ways, married two wonderful children and two great, 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 not old, but great uh, grandchildren, uh, granddaughters. So um, I love Lynchburg. I love the people here. I love serving. And that's something that I've enjoyed throughout my number of years throughout the community is getting to know people, getting involved on the local government levels, serving on boards and commissions. And then uh, recently, I retired from the state, and uh, Dr. Garrett, who was our representative at that time, said, it's time for me to retire. And I said, Dr. Garrett, I'd like to go fishing. He said, later. So anyway, uh, people chose to send me to Richmond. It's been a delight uh, serving the community here in the 52nd District. It was the 23rd. Now it is the 52nd. And uh, so... I look forward to going back in November and continuing the progress that we have uh, accomplished under the uh, guidance of our great governor, uh, Glenn Youngkin. You know, a little bit about my background. After I completed college, um, I was self-employed for a number of years as a landscape contractor. And then I went to work for the Virginia Department of Labor and Industry, where I spent 21 years working with these great industries out here, helping young people find jobs and develop skills that uh, would help make our workforce stronger and better. So that's where my strength is in serving our community, is um, working with our uh, industries and businesses uh, to make Virginia number one in the Commonwealth when it comes to workforce. So that's where uh, my background comes from. All right, excellent. And, you know, the second question, thinking about your district, if elect, well, actually, if you're reelected, uh, what are going to be your legislative priorities coming up for the next next session? Oh, goodness. There are a lot of priorities. And, you know, the most important thing is in order for Governor Yunkin to complete the next two years uh, in his administration, he needs a working General Assembly. It's important that we have both the House and the Senate working together with the governor to accomplish you know, the goals that the governor set out earlier on. And so part of my goals are goals of Governor Glenn Youngkin. I can start by, first of all, saying, you know, we need to put more money back into the hardworking uh, people's pocket, the taxpayers. You know, we've got to find a way to lower the cost of living out here. We understand the financial challenges that face uh, each and every one of us every day. And Richmond, you know, that's part of the things that we can do is find ways by which we can streamline government and make it more efficient in working for the citizens. You know, another couple of points, if I may, um, it's important to keep our communities safe by prioritizing our law enforcement. 
We've seen over the last several years, certainly under the former administration of Governor Yunkin, and when the other side was in charge, defunding law enforcement and things like that did not work. And so we've got to get back to respecting our law enforcement, providing the funds, resources they need out here to keep our streets safe, keep our schools safe. And uh, so those are important priorities. And of course, I mentioned earlier workforce. Strengthening Virginia's workforce and expanding our career opportunities has got to be number one priority uh, for our region here. Now, Lynchburg is uh, is blessed with many, many, I say Lynchburg, this region around us. I don't know if we still refer to Region 2000 or just the Lynchburg Regional, but, you know, so many great businesses have been here for a number of years. We've got to ensure that they, these industries can continue to operate, you know, with the workforce that we need. You know, we need to promote job growth and economic development here uh, with our in Central Virginia. And a lot of these things are by ex being able to foster and expand uh, existing business here. And of course, with uh, no doubt, the quality of education, we've got to do everything we can to enhance education, empower our parents and our students out here. And we've seen in the last couple of years, this has been very, very critical a lot of challenges that young people are facing now, parents and educators. So those would be uh, a few of my priorities uh, when I return back to Richmond. Okay, well, excellent. And just to uh, make sure that everybody's clear, we're going to try and limit the uh, uh, the candidate interview to 30 minutes. And so, uh, you know, and some of the questions we're not going to be able to get to. Um, but, uh, you know, Again, uh, you know, I'll kick this over to Kenny for the next couple of questions. And uh, Kenny, uh, take it Great. away. Thank you, Barry. Um, well, uh, Delegate Walker, you have already touched on this. But we're going to move over to education and workforce a little bit, and specifically K through 12 education. Um, as as you know, the, there's a seems to be a shortage across the United States with public school teachers. But thinking about that and addressing um, our specific area, what are some of the things that can be done through the General Assembly to help localities improve teacher retention and, and attraction? Well, certainly the attraction is important. Uh, as we face teacher shortages here um, in our community, you know, this is a big challenge that the school system has, the school boards, and uh, things of that nature. You know, alongside with Governor Youngkin, we've worked in Richmond to advance reforms to improve teacher retention and attraction. You know, some of the things that the governor has done with the General Assembly is to modify some of the requirements to allow uh, professional people from other states to come into Virginia to fill the vacancies and the job openings that we have here. And so uh, we need to continue to look at that through our, our workforce regulations. And of course, uh, this year, uh, we just finished up the budget this uh, last week. And in that uh, budget, uh, we added $645 million to public ed education, which me, which includes a 2% uh, salary increase for our teachers and 5% uh, above the last year's budget. So the funding for education has been a priority for Governor Yunkin. The most money that has ever been put into education has been put in this year under Governor Youngkin's administration. So I'm happy to work with the governor and helping to address the funding issues that we have out here and the challenges that we have. You know, going into the uh, next session, uh, January of 24, we need to look at how we can implement apprenticeship programs and training for new uh, teachers coming into the, our workforce, incentivize uh, retired teachers, you know, bring these teachers with a lot of experience back into the workforce. So I think there's a lot of things we need to be looking at and how we can fill the gaps that we need out here in our education systems. And so these are just a few of the things uh, that we're looking at as far as create incentives in our public education and increasing our teacher retention and growing our teachers. Okay, let's, let's move on to career technical education, uh, staying with education and workforce, but are there other ways, are there ways that career career technical education and other technical programs can be supported so we can rebuild the talent pipeline for an aging workforce. Yes, you know, working with a lot of our schools, uh, CT, uh, CTE programs, our uh, STEM programs and things like that, 
identifying and uh, earlier ages in our school are very important and trying to help these kids get onto a career track here. You know, a lot of kids that are coming through our school system now, we want to make sure when they graduate, that they not only graduate from the school, but they have a job the next day that they graduate. And so in order to do that, it's collectively working together with our city schools, our community colleges, you know, the other workforce training programs that we have here and available and bridging those gaps out here. So that's one thing that we're going to continue to do is, is work in that uh work with that relationship that we have already established with the community colleges, as well as our CTE programs and our schools. Okay. I'm going to ask one more, then I'll turn it over to Barry. So my, okay, no next question, yeah, the next question um, has to do with uh, VTAG. How important is VTAG Virginia tuition assistance grant to your districts, to your district? Um, and as private colleges and universities are economic drivers in this region, how will you support the TAG program going forward? No question, the VTAG is very, very important to my locality here in the 52nd district. As we know, Lynchburg has great colleges, universities, in particular, we have three private universities here. One thing that was so disappointing with the previous administration was when Governor uh, Youngkin decided to remove that funding for online education for a lot of our students, there's over 2,000 students uh, that lost that funding. This past year, as a result of working with our governor, I was able to submit a uh, budget amendment to restore that funding to students, uh, our online students, by 50% increase. And thankfully that amendment passed and that we're moving forward, restoring the funding that we need because, you know, money grows, I mean, as, um, as students uh, come to schools, their financial needs are very, very important. And so we're getting VTAG back on the right track. You know, there shouldn't, there should be no reason why we should be discriminating against the people, young people who are trying to get a quality education here. And certainly here in the Central Virginia, that VTAG is very important to all of our colleges and universities. And I will continue to do everything I can to make sure not only do we keep what we have, but we increase the ability to fund more. I'll turn it over to Barry, but before you do that, I think you misspoke and you said that the Governor Yunkin cut it out. Um, I think oh, you I meant the previous governor cut it out, right? Yeah. Oh, my goodness, please. Yeah, uh, yeah. you're absolutely right. So right. Governor Northen cut it out. Right. Okay. Governor Yunkin. Right. Governor Yunkin. Uh, along with us in the House, uh, restored that. And that was one of my budget amendments last year, which I was yeah. very delighted to do because yeah. I was once a college student myself. So I understand what those financial challenges are. Okay. I'll turn it over to Barry. Sorry. Sorry. All right. Sorry. All right. Well, yeah, thank you. Um, one question is going to be on military veterans, and then I'm going to go into uh, housing and child care. Um, so, Delegate Walker. Uh, thinking about, uh, you know, military and veterans affairs, um, you know, we have a lot of uh, retired military that call uh, Lynchburg and Central Virginia home. Uh, what are some ways the Commonwealth of Virginia can encourage veterans and military families to stay in Virginia and to connect them to education, training, or straight to civilian careers? Without question, veterans are so, so important. You know, this is... Um, the weekend remember September 11th. Yesterday, the field of honor, I had the privilege of being out there with a lot of veterans. And one veteran, Mr. John Birch, was a World War II veteran. And when I think about what have we as a country, as a Commonwealth done to help our veterans, you know, that's something that should be a number one priority because there are so many veterans here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. So this past year, <clears throat> we were able to do something to help these veterans, these retired veterans. So we eliminated any taxes on up to $40,000 of their uh, income. So this, any financial relief we give to veterans is always a plus, but when we can give up to $40,000 tax-free to our retired veterans and every benefit that we can give to them, that helps them. But what about the ones that are coming back into the workforce after having served our nation? These are trained professional individuals with a lot of different skills. 
those are individuals we should put a, a front of the line. In other words, make a priority when it comes to getting them back into a workforce. You know, so many industries around here need the skills of our veterans. So whether it is in the schools or in security and manufacturing and industries, that is something that is it must continue uh, to look out for our veterans, make sure they have every opportunity it can, and I will continue to support our legislation that helps the veterans in that regard. Okay, thank you. Moving on to housing and child care. Um, rising cost and availability of child care is impacting the availability uh, in our labor force. Uh, many uh, are leaving. This is leaving many uh, families struggling to find affordable child care or they're deciding to leave the workforce and stay at home with their children. Um, do you think the state has a role in playing to help, uh, has a role to play in solving this problem? And what are some ways that the state can help address this issue here in the 52nd district? Regarding child care, uh, it's certainly a big issue out here because when we're talking about strengthening our workforce and not having the, the personnel we need right now to keep some of our industries going, this is something I think we've got to partner with our private industries out here on the state level. How can we work to either give tax incentives or other means by which these parents that have children can find a place by which they can, um, you know, be throughout the day while they're they're working? So I don't have a, a, a perfect or exact answer. But it is a priority as far as trying to help and ensure that the industries continue to have employees while those individuals are trying to raise their family. Lots of challenges out here. So I think it's got to be a little bit of government stepping in and trying to help out. I'm not saying find all the child care because it's got to be a private, a private uh, partnership uh, in, the, in this regard here. Uh, so that was child care. And you said what, housing? Um, well, that was the child care. And then um, let's see uh, the next question. Um, so a lot of places are struggling with uh, affordable housing and uh, the definition that uh, that we have uh, kind of settled on when we say affordable housing, uh, that's meaning the ability for a person to afford to live in a reasonable proximity to where they also work. So, for example, uh, housing that's affordable to, um, you know, our emerging medical service, uh, you know, um, personnel, teachers, police, uh, et cetera. Um, and they're struggling to find affordable homes and even buying rent localities where they serve. Some places are far worse than others, but uh, it's it hasn't escaped us here in the greater Lynchburg region. Uh, what can be done legislatively to make a, uh, affordable affordability more accessible to all in all in, in all economic conditions? Certainly, that is a great need. I think probably one of the things we could uh, look at, Barry, is trying to find ways by which we can give more tax incentives to our first responders and to our critical public safety uh, employees. You know, they should be able to live in the city in which they work instead of living out in the counties. Of course, you know, the cost is um, lower there. But there's certainly this has got to be a way where we can help find affordable housing. I know that there's... Uh, some incentives around here when we look at Divine Fog, uh, Lighthouse uh, community. You know, here recently I was as part of the Lighthouse community when they built a individual home for uh, a person here. They have a large block out there off of Florida Avenue. I'm not sure how many acres, but they could probably put in, you know, close to 100 homes there. They're very affordable. So we need to look and see how we can partner with our local builders, developers, and, and then create incentives here you know, from the government side to where we can have affordable housing for all our uh, our first responders and uh, public safety folks. So that's one thing we're certainly working at, and I'm trying to do that on a local level. Of course, a lot of that has to do with we can provide funds through the General Assembly, but then the local housing authorities, you know, they're made up of appointed people, you know, federal, state, and, and local here. So they've got to be a very important part of helping to find an answer to this uh, housing needs. All right. Well, thank you. Penny, I'll um, kick it over to you again. Yes, we're going to move to business climate. Uh, we'll start with this question, Delegate Walker. What are some additional ways the Commonwealth of Virginia can support economic development initiatives that improve the ability of pad-ready sites, create jobs, and strengthen trade? 
I think as you have seen this past session, um, I think one of the important things for uh, job ready uh, is having pads or or sites, you know, uh, that large business come into and establish. I know one of the things that Senator Newman was working on, and we collectively in the General Assembly, was having an inland port here. That would be very, very important to the Lynchburg business region here, having that uh, ability to have an inland port like that, you know, with our commerce and, and trade in those areas. So I think those are some things we can look at as far as, you know, expanding uh, the development and bringing industries in, because certainly the governor is the number one cheerleader recruiting business to come into Virginia. Then we, as, as General Assembly members, look at ways we can uh, work from a locality standpoint or in our regions out here, you know, working with business alliances and, and other organizations to help find those uh, ready uh, sites. Um, because that's important. You know, businesses will come if there's a place for them to set up a, uh, a business and if there is a workforce. So these are part of the priorities that I work in, in the General Assembly is making sure uh, working closely with the Business Alliance and our business industries that those resources uh, are available out here. We're a business focused organization. So I'm going to ask one related to small business because uh, most businesses are just that small. So what are some barriers that impede small business growth and entrepreneurship and how can these barriers be removed or minimized? I think a lot of it has to do with regulations, red tape that government is good at creating, you know, whether it's local, state or national. Anytime we can cut the red tape uh, regarding businesses and their ability to do what they do best, and that's produce a product, provide employment, and make a profit to expand in the areas. So those are things that we need to look at. And I think we need to be more aggressive in recruiting and attract the business into the Commonwealth. And we can do that when we start looking at how we can minimize the red tape that is involved there creating financial incentives, you know, lowering the corporate uh, taxes and some of these things which we're able to do this past session here. So giving tax incentives, cutting red tape, all of those are very, very important to expanding and growing the businesses here within our region. Okay, I'm going to ask one more, then I'll turn it over to Barry. Um, okay, not a problem. Back back to, uh, you just mentioned taxes, and I know that's something the General Assembly were, were, uh, was debating this last session. How can the General Assembly target tax reform going forward to better position the state for economic growth and investment? How can we better um, reform our taxes? Yes. Tax structure? Right. To make you more competitive with, um, um, to make the state more competitive for economic growth and investment, how can we, how can the General Assembly target tax reform? Certainly taxes are a big burden on everybody. And when industries are looking to expand, you know, from around the state and even here within the mid-Atlantic region, a lot of those businesses base their decisions whether to come into Virginia based on our tax structures and, and the incentives that we can offer them as far as coming in and developing. So by, like I said earlier, removing a lot of those regulations, creating tax incentives, and we have the ability to do that. The governor does that with the Virginia Economic Development uh, Partnerships and programs such as that out here. I think those are important when it comes to marketing, you know, businesses outside of the Commonwealth. We've seen a lot of businesses come into Northern Virginia that the governor's been working on. We're beginning to see some of those in Southwest Virginia. But even here in Central Virginia, while we have a a great workforce and uh, industries here. We've got to continue to make sure that we're doing all we can to keep them here and to help them to expand. And so tax incentives are very, very important and red tape cutting as much as we can, freeing up their ability to do what they do best. Yeah, thank you, Delegate Walker. I'll turn back over to Barry. Okay. I'm going to come back to one question on education and workforce that we didn't get to, or I don't believe we did. Uh, and then after that, uh, give you a few minutes to uh, wrap up. Um, so thinking about our district um, and, uh, you know, and what you were just talking about um, on the previous question, 
Uh, I want to try and tie that in. But what are some some of the most chronic workforce shortages in in this in your district in the Lynchburg region? And what can be done to build talent pathways for these in demand jobs? Certainly, one thing I hear from a lot of the businesses, uh, employers around here, uh, say, for instance, in the manufacturing area, is the skilled labors that they need. You know, for a lot of our industries, whether it's the the nuclear industry, BWX, uh, T, uh, Framaton, other industries like that. You know, people coming out of the schools, going into um, careers such as welding. Welding is such a high demand job right now. And what we need to do is be able to keep our young people here in our workforces instead of train them and then send them off, say, to the Tidewater area, the shipbuilding areas. So we've got to find ways by which we can continue to strengthen our workforces here to help our industries here. You know, the STEM programs, uh, the workforce programs, career technical, all of those clusters are very, very important. So whatever funding we can continue to do to strengthen those, bring in the skilled instructors, going back to the veterans, you know, a lot of these are professionally trained individuals that can come in and help be part of that training workforce. So those are some of the things I think we need to be looking at going forward, you know, uh, the STEM programs have just really taken off and doing such a great job out here. You know, the science technology that a lot of young people are looking at. So anything we can continue to do to create these incentives, the funding uh, is very important to our region. Okay. Well, thank you again, uh, Delegate Walker, for being a part of this. And uh, just a few minutes, you know, got a few minutes to uh, uh, to wrap up and any, any closing remarks. Well, certainly look forward to uh, going back to Richmond in January, but the only way I can do that is November the 7th is a very, very important day here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. And we all know what that means because there's 140 seats uh, for uh, re-election or election uh, for open seats here in the General Assembly. If we want to continue to support the governor in the vision that he has laid out and what we've been able to accomplish over the last two years, the governor needs uh, legislators that he can work with to accomplish that. We've seen a lot of good things in the last two years uh, from the education, the tax incentives and that we're doing, you know, increasing the workforce out here. All of these are very, very important. We cannot stop now. We must continue and even do better than what we're doing. So many needs out here within our communities here. But I think that the governor has to have the people that understand his vision that he can work with. And uh, that's important. So don't take for granted your vote on November the 7th, because your vote is very important out here. You know, we want safe communities. We want better schools. We want to have the affordable houses that are needed out here. We want safe streets out here. And the only way that's ever going to accomplish is by electing people who really care about having a great community. Have you been involved in this community and being a, a servant in the last four years? That's what I look forward to do uh, with the help of the uh, folks here in the 52nd District. I'm so gracious and humbled by the opportunity to serve. I try to work as hard as I can. Everybody knows that I'm accessible. And uh, so reach out to me. Uh, I'd love to see you November the 7th. And I'd love to be back in uh, Richmond, January, working on behalf of the folks here in the 52nd District. Delegate Walker, thank you so much. And uh, Kenny, thank you again for uh, being a part of uh, these interviews. And, uh, you know, we will, uh, again, we're going to be posting these, uh, you know, all these interviews uh, with the information that you've given us uh, for your campaign uh, just ahead of when early voting starts so that uh, all of our members and if anybody in the public wants to access it, they will uh, have uh, more than enough time to learn about you, listen to your positions, and uh, make a decision going forward. So again, thank you, Delegate Walker. Thank you, Kenny. And uh, one, yeah, go ahead. Yes, one, one quick thing here. You know, this is a lot to try to cover in a short period of time. Yes. And uh, so I would suggest that people go to wintawalker.org. There on my Facebook, you can learn more about the issues that maybe we didn't cut touch on or cover today. You can look at some of the bills that I sponsored. So in the short period of time we've had to be here this morning is great, but for additional information and what we have been doing and what we want to continue, wintawalker.org. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you.